Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss another important topic for the NEET exams that is eruption and shedding of the teeth. Let's begin with the process of eruption. What do you understand by the term eruption of teeth? Eruption of teeth is basically referred as the vertical movement of the teeth. Vertical movement that is the occlusal movement going upward movement of the teeth till it comes into the process position of occlusion. So this is the definition for the eruption of the teeth. How will the tooth move? Let's study the physiological tooth movements which are basically categorized into three. That is the first one is the pre-eruptive stage of movement or eruption. Then the eruptive stage second and the third is the post-eruptive phase of physiological tooth movement. So what happens in the pre-eruptive phase? So movement of teeth occurs within the jaw before it appears in the oral cavity. So the in, in pre-eruptive stage, the tooth is within the jaw. It is not appeared in the oral cavity yet. To accommodate the jaw growth and to accommodate the growth of tooth itself, it is the growth or the vertical movement is occurring within the jaw occurs both in horizontal direction and vertical direction. So movement is both in horizontal also and vertical also. The second stage is the eruptive stage. In this stage, the tooth first appears in the oral cavity till it reaches the occlusion, the position where it will occlude the opposite arch tooth. So here mainly the movement is in vertical direction and then may be seen a mesial shift of the jaw growth. So this point is very important and MCQ can be framed from this point in which stage of the physiologic tooth movement will you see the tooth first appear in the oral cavity. It is the second stage known as the eruptive stage. Then comes the third stage that is known as the post eruptive stage. So the tooth is already in the oral cavity. Here what happens it accommodates further jaw growth to accommodate the tooth where in occlusion and the proximal side. So once the tooth is appeared in the oral cavity, the post eruptive stage accommodates further jaw, jaw growth in the occlusion and the proximal side. Let's discuss some of the other important points related to eruption. So here we will see the rate of the eruptive movements. These values can be a base for an MCQ in the MDS exams. So the anteriors we have the rate of eruptive movement of 1 mm per month and for premolars it will be 4.5 mm per 3 months remember this. Key point to be noted here is it is fastest has minimal bone resistance. So this is the fastest, uh, fastest rate of eruptive movement. For molars it is 1 mm per 3 months. So out of anterior premolars and molars, the fastest rate of eruptive movement is seen in the premolars. The rate is 4.5 mm per 3 months. And for anteriors and molars, in case of anteriors, 1, 1 mm per month. And for molars, it is 1 mm per 3 months. So there are basically intra bony eruption, which are slower, and extra bony eruption, which are faster. Then we come on to very important topic in eruption, the theories of eruption. There were many theories made from the past. Basically, we will categorize them into seven. So the first theory is the gubernucular cord theory, followed by the second theory or the root formation theory. Then came the hammock ligament theory. Fourth is the PDL traction theory. Then came the bone remodeling theory. Then came the dental follicle theory and the another theory which is in picture right now is molecular determinants theory. So how does eruption take place? Everyone had a reason and mechanism to explain for the eruption of the tooth. Let's start with a gubernicular cord theory. According to this theory of eruption, they say that the succedaneous teeth that are attached to the primary predecessors via a cord. So which contracts to help in eruption. So there is a primary teeth, there is a succedal teeth, they both are attached through a cord, maybe a guminular cord which contracts and leads to eruption of the occlusal movement of teeth according to this theory. 
So the key fact to remember is lingual lamina is mistaken sometimes as the gobernugular cord in appearance. So the second theory of eruption is the root formation theory. Now what does this theory explains? It says that, let's see this is a tooth and this is the root. According to the root formation theory, this is the crown and this is the root. According to the root formation theory, it says that when root formation occurs or elongation of the root occurs downwards, that is this part of the root is elongated, it creates a pressure which creates a occlusal movement of the upper structure of the tooth in the occlusal movement and this is how the eruption occurs. But the limitation of this theory was when pressure is exerted on the bone surroundings, it causes bone resorption. So to check whether the theory really works, the experiment was done. In this experiment, what they did was they tied a tooth with the lower mandibular border and no root formation occurred. So after the experiment, they concluded that it is not the root, root does not cause eruption, rather it is because of eruption that a space is created for the root to develop. So root formation occurs due to the space created by the eruption of the tooth. So this theory was neglected. Then came the third theory that is the hammock ligament theory. According to this theory, it explained that Harry Schicher explained a band of fibrous tissue, they are known the hammock ligament, exists around the root apex. So here, they say that it, this root apex has a band of ligaments and they named it as a hammock ligament. Now this theory explained that it is due to these tissues or this hammock cushion like ligaments that the spanning of the root apex or the space spanning uh, exists below the root apex spanning from one side of the alveolar wall to another occurs over here. So there is a movement due to the hammock ligament. But when the histological section was checked, histological section checked, there was no specialized ligament found. So this theory was again neglected and in some case PDL was mistaken as hammock ligament. So this is how these both theory got ruled out. The fourth theory of eruption is another important theory known as the PDL traction theory. Now this theory explains that the tooth movement occurs due to three processes that is A due to fibroblast which has the contractile properties, B due to the connection with the collagen fibers extracellular also known as fibronexus which helps in the eruption of the teeth and C the oblique alignment of the periodontal ligament collagen fiber cells and fibers of the periodontal ligament possess this contractile force which leads to the eruption of the tooth. So they concluded that the periodontal ligament has this contractile forces and contraction which causes the eruption of the tooth. Then came another theory known as the bone remodeling theory. The name itself you will understand one side there is removal and the other side there is deposition. So removal of bone from the occlusal side and addition on the apical side leads to the eruption or the vertical movement of the tooth. The factors which help in the bone remodeling are important, please note, Ranex 2 causes the bone deposition on the apical side and the factors like transforming growth factors beta 1, CSF 1, PTHRP1 causes the occlusal side resorption. So this is how one side the removal occurs on occlusion side and apex there is addition or deposition. So this is how the tooth moves in the vertical direction. Moving forward to the sixth theory of eruption that is the dental follicle theory. According to this theory, they say that dental follicle is essential part of eruption phase. So they performed an experiment to prove this theory. They showed that tooth devoid of the follicle showed no eruption. But when there was presence of follicle, tooth was replaced with acrylic block. 
and it erupted the acrylic block erupted in the oral cavity it meant that the presence of follicle was important for the eruption the seventh and the last theory of eruption is the molecular determinants theory according to this theory there are certain molecules like run x2 colony stimulating factor 1 transforming growth factor beta 1 and parathyroid hormone releasing proteins are important part in the eruption of the tooth but it also says that eruption is a multifactorial process so there is no one theory which supports the complete eruption of the tooth there are multifactorial uh, processes that leads to eruption of the tooth let's discuss the frequently asked question from the topic of eruption of the tooth so in the question they have asked during eruption of the permanent teeth it will show which movement so eruption as I defined in the lecture is the occlusal movement also called the vertical movement of tooth after referring this just go through all the options a bodily and axial axial means vertical and occlusion b bodily and eccentric eccentric means in any direction away from the occlusion third is axial and eccentric means in occlusion in, in, in any direction and fourth is mesial and eccentric means mesially and in any direction other than the occlusion so the closest of these options is the option a which will be the answer for this question let's see the another question which is asked from the topic of eruption occlusal surface of mandibular permanent first molar they are asking about a permanent tooth that is first molar in which phase initial pre-eruptive stage directed in which direction so they are asking basically during this phase of the eruption what is the direction of the permanent first molar so it is a pre-eruptive stage the tooth is still in the jaw so in such state the permanent maxillary molars are in distal direction remember this point and mandibular molars are in mesial direction so now let's go through the options a mesial distal buccal or lingual so here we are talking about the permanent first molar and that is mandibular permanent first molar so as I explained it is in the jaw itself due to the pre eruptive stage so the answer here is mandibular first molar will be in the mesial direction this is the correct answer for this question if you are clear with your theory such uh, questions can be easily answered the other frequently asked question is about the most accepted theory of tooth eruption I have explained seven theories in my lecture so out of which you will see that a one theory that I had explained in the lecture is the most logical is based on the PDL which has got contraction property that leads to eruption so you go through the option of these questions that is hydrodynamic theory no clone theory there is no clone theory here then periodontal ligament traction theory yes this is the theory which is accepted in the theory of tooth eruption vascular theory no so the answer is direct that is c periodontal ligament traction theory is the most uh, accepted theory of tooth eruption due to its contractile properties and the property of contraction which leads to eruption of the tooth